Good morning, Glory U Day. Would you please stand as we sing and worship this morning? Good morning, church. It's a joy to be with you. I'm Dan Shepard, one of the pastors here at Gloria Day, and it is a blessing to worship with you this morning. As the psalmist said, I rejoice, and they said, let's go to the house of the Lord uh, together. Special welcome to our guests with us this morning, especially first-time guests. If you're a first-time guest, uh, use that QR code. I'm telling you, even our members, that QR code is becoming a treasure mine, of, a treasure trove of goodness. There's so many things in there you'll see in there. And we have movable buttons on there now, the bottom three. It might be the last three if you're using a mobile phone. Um, actually, you are. You can't use a desktop. <laughs> I just need to be quiet, don't I? All right. Hey, good morning, church. Let me start all over. How about that? <laughs> Hey, we are having a children's mess this morning, and we love all the kids that come forward with that as well. Let's start this day remembering our baptism as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, as one of your pastors, it is my incredible joy and privilege to announce his grace, his mercy, your forgiveness, using his words. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. Praise to the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you hold the power of a wind, wave, and all creation. Continue to rescue us from trouble and distress. Give us strength to assist other people, but ultimately to show them you, the ultimate rescuer. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 11 and 21 through 23. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. 
according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. One day he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and he rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even winds and water? And they obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we say and confess together what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. And at this time, we invite all of our children down in front for a special sermon time. This morning. Are you good? I'm going to give you something and I want you to hold it in your hand and don't look at it until I tell you to. Okay? I'm going to give you something, hold it in your hand, don't look at it until I tell you to. Whoops. Here you go. Can you hold out your hand? Close your hand. There you go. Hold out your hand. There you go. I'm going to come up and grab one. You guys want to come up? There you go. There you go. Come on up here. Oops. I'm going to toss this. Okay, you got one? Okay, now take a look at what's in your hand. What is it? Jesus. It's like a little itty-bitty Jesus, isn't it? It's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah, do you know there is this pastor who's on the internet, and his name is Trent Tribe. And every week he puts out a devotion 
Well, one particular week, he comes into church on a Sunday morning, and the youth had had a lock-in in in the church the night before. And he comes in, and there are hundreds and hundreds of these little tiny Jesuses hid all over the church. Isn't that funny? Like everywhere they looked, in bathrooms, on, um, in corners, on trash cans, every little corner they looked, these little tiny Jesuses were hid. And he thought that was so cool, he took a video of where all these little Jesuses were hid. And people loved his video so much, they kept watching and watching until thousands and thousands and thousands of people clicked on his video to see the story about the little Jesuses that were hidden all over his church. On the internet, people who have thousands and thousands of people who follow them are called influencers. Have you ever heard that word? It's a big fancy word for uh, people who uh, others kind of follow, others watch, others look at. Well, it reminded me when I saw that video of what we're going to talk about today in church. In fact, Pastor Randy is going to read from 1 Corinthians again and talk about how Paul, the Apostle Paul, said to the people, here's the deal. You belong to Jesus, and every time you go out, you are an influencer, There's that big fancy word again. Everywhere you go, Jesus goes with you. Do you have a thought? Um, Did the the little Jesuses um, been hidden on stage too? On the stage as well, those little Jesuses were. They were hid everywhere. Like Like, everywhere you walked, they were hid. Even like on the cross? Wouldn't that be fun to see that? I know, people notice these little Jesuses everywhere. Well, the Apostle Paul tells us, because we belong to Jesus, every time we walk out these doors, Jesus goes with us, and a little bit of Jesus gets spread everywhere as we love and as we serve others, as we're kind, as we're helpers, um, as we go to work or we play or we go to school or we go to sports or dance, everywhere we go, Jesus goes with us. But we're not hidden like those little Jesus were. We're right out there and Jesus works with us. That's kind of a cool thing to know, isn't it? But we don't do it on our own. Jesus is the one that works through us to love and serve others. We're influencers. We impact others to point back to Jesus. Is that pretty cool? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this little tiny Jesus and I want you to put it somewhere in your bedroom or your house to remind you every day that Jesus goes with you to impact and influence others towards Jesus. That's kind of neat. Should we ask Jesus to help us do that boldly? Would you fold your hands and bow your heads? Moms and dads and big people, will you pray along with us as well? Dear Jesus, we love you so much. And we know, Lord, that you love us too so much that you live in us and you work through us to love and serve others. Help us, Lord, to be your influencers to those around us. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may go back to your seats. Now, Miss Audrey, great message. Did you hide Jesus around the building? I know a project for the next (laughs) lock-in. Let's go viral. Let's be influencers. 
Our service continues as we worship our Savior with our offerings. As our ushers prepare themselves to receive the offering, uh, I again want to say thank you for your generosity. Our Honduras mission team is safe and well uh, in Honduras. Actually, yesterday they did a medical brigade. I haven't heard the results yet. I haven't heard all the stats and everything else, but I know they were busy prepping for and having to get ready to go. We we'll look forward to having them come back this week and share more details with it as well. I uh, also want to say thank you for our impact week is starting this week on, on um, Monday. Uh, our kids and students are making an impact in the Nassau Bay community, and that happens because of your generosity uh, influencing this community through your financial generosity. With that, I invite the ushers forward to receive the offering.
For those of you I haven't met, my name is Randy Miller, one of the pastors here. It's great to welcome all of you here as we hear from God's Word and we finish our series on kingdom impact and the ways that God uses us to make an impact not only in our own lives and in our families, but across our, our world and across our communities. And uh, what I want to do is to begin the conversation uh, with an event that happened here in Houston last month. I wonder if you remember this event. It was around May 14th, 15th, 16th, somewhere in there, mid-May. And uh, maybe you were outside like I was uh, whenever there was like a warning about a storm. Um, instead of like hiding and taking shelter, you go outside like any normal person does and takes a look at how bad the weather really looks. And so I, I, this is an amazing picture of this storm that came through Houston, um, just an amazing cloud, uh, and it looked really, really bad, really, really awful. Uh, and whether people, they look at this event and they called it a derecho, right? So this is a windstorm that came through Houston, and it really impacted downtown Houston. If some of you saw the pictures of the result of the downtown buildings and the windows blown out, uh, winds were clocked at 100 miles an hour. So you would just be surprised because we would expect hurricanes and that kind of wind event. So it really took us by surprise last month when we had this kind of weather event. And it not only affected Houston in our area, but there was a map that showed the impact of this storm that it impacted not only Houston, but it carried across all the way to Florida. And there was someone who said that it affected JSC to Cape Canaveral. This storm affected Space City all the way to the Space Coast. And it was just pretty amazing to think that one storm can not only impact us here in Houston, but also travel across multiple states and affect Florida. And there was like this space connection and I love all things space, and so it was kind of cool to think, even though the storm was destructive, uh, but that it was pretty amazing to think that what affected us here in Houston affected those in Florida as well. Well, I want to make a connection with that, and I want to ask the question, what if we at Gloria Day, what if we could make a bigger impact? Uh, not in a negative way, not in a destructive way like that storm did last month, but it just gets me thinking about what impact greater than we're already doing at Gloria Day. What would it look like for God's Spirit to breathe in and through all of our lives that causes such a big impact on the people around you, where more of His love and more of His grace, more of His forgiveness would be stretched across multiple, multiple people? What if the winds of the Spirit blew in our lives so powerfully that it was just unmistakable that it was God's work in you to make an impact on someone else's life, especially their spiritual lives, that they would receive Jesus as their Savior? What if the breeze of God's Spirit rushed in and through this congregation more and more and more, that it was just unmistakable that Gloria Day, there's something going on at Gloria Day, that God's Spirit is moving in and through each and every one of us, where it's not just what we're doing, but what we're doing for others, on behalf of others, serving others. And that excites me. That vision of our potential impact excites me here at Gloria Day. But there's some things that get in the way of that. And we want to talk about that today, about some of the barriers for us allowing God and especially His Holy Spirit to work in and through us in a powerful, powerful way. So we're going to look at a few scripture passages, and I would invite you to walk with me through these passages uh, in the Bible in the pew ahead of you, and the verses will be on the screen as well. And however you engage scripture, to read these passages with me and see the barriers that are very real that we need to be aware of and to confess and be able to break down so that God's Spirit can continue to move in and through glory day so that we can make a kingdom impact on those around us. So the first passage we're going to look at is from Luke chapter 8. It's our gospel reading that was read earlier, and you can find that on page 865. And read with me um, and follow along as we once again hear the story. Uh, Jesus is with his disciples and there is an event that happens that really shakes them to the core and really shows them who Jesus is in their lives. And it shows us the real Jesus in our lives as well. So we're looking at Luke chapter 8 beginning with verse 22. One day he, Jesus, got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, 
he fell asleep. That's not good when Jesus falls asleep. And notice what happens. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And, and I imagine as we're reading this, it's like the storm in Houston last month. It's a raging windstorm. And they were filling with water and they were in danger. And they went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. So I just want you to imagine if you were in the middle of this storm, just the worry and the anxiety, they were fearful for their lives. They were saying to Jesus, Jesus, we're going to die, and you're sleeping, and you could care less about what's going on. In verse 24, as we continue, and he awoke, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? The first obstacle, the first barrier to us making a kingdom impact here at Gloria Day is simply fear, is fear. It is fear of the storms around us, not the, the physical storms that the weather brings our way, but the storms in our hearts and the fear that we have and the anxiety that we carry, fearful of being courageous to take the step that God is calling us to take. And Jesus looks at us and says, where is our faith? Where are we placing our faith? Sometimes we want to be in control of a situation. We want to make sure that everything's just right and we want all the boxes checked and we want to make sure that all the risk is mitigated and so that we take some very safe steps in our spiritual walk. But Jesus challenges that. He says, where is your faith? And just as the disciples saw and learned that he was the master of wind and wave, that he is also the master of their lives, that as we look to Jesus, there is nothing to be afraid of. As we look to Jesus, there's nothing to fear. And the story ends in verse 25. And they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him? So the first barrier that we need to confess is fear. Any fear inside of us that holds us back, that says, Jesus, I need to have the whole plan laid out before I take my first step, Jesus is going to say, I'm giving you courage and I'm giving you a faith that is bold so that you take those steps and allow me to work in your lives every single day. So if we want to make a kingdom impact and continue to glorify God, we need to confess our fear and allow God's strength to work in and through us. The second barrier that impacts us when we want to make a kingdom impact, it really gets in the way is what Paul later on, as this Jesus community started, uh, that Jesus begins to have this momentum and this movement started. Paul's going to mention division and rivalries. And so we're going to look at a church at, at about 50 AD, uh, after Jesus' death and resurrection, and, and a few decades after that, a church begins in a city called Corinth. And Paul started this church. Paul's a follower of Jesus. And he spends about a year and a half growing a Jesus community there in Corinth. And after a year and a half, he leaves and he goes to Ephesus to start a movement there in that city. And while Paul is in Ephesus, he gets reports and he hears word from Corinth that after he left, it's not going well. It's splintered and it's not doing well. Believers are fighting amongst themselves. And, and right out of the gate in his first letter to Corinth, Paul calls it out and says, here's what's going on. So we fast forward. And if you look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you'll find that on page 952. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul shows us another barrier to our kingdom impact, divisions and rivalries within a church. And so we hear these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. Again, this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and this is what he is hearing, and he reflects it back to them. He says, for it's been reported to me by Chloe's people. So he says, you can't doubt it. This is a real person that's telling me this news from Chloe's family, that there's quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. So Paul's getting word back that as Corinth and as this church is living on mission, that they're really dividing amongst themselves. They're, they're lining up behind key leaders. And the people who are worshiping there say, well, you know, I follow Apollos and he's the best teacher. 
or I follow Paul, even though he's not here, I'm going to follow everything he says, or I follow Cephas. So, so Paul is bringing out these four groups and saying there's so many divisions and there's so many people lining up and picking sides that it's not good. And Paul's asking, which one is better? And that's what they would fight about. They would fight about the status of each of these people. And they would say, our leader's better than your leader. Um, our leader's more eloquent than someone else. And they would just line up behind these people. And when we read this passage, we need to personalize it to our day and age today. Because when I interact with those of you, you're not saying that at all. It would be something like this of some of you saying, hey, I follow Pastor Dan and I'm going to ignore everyone else. Or I follow Pastor Randy or Pastor Nelson or Pastor Steve. Or the 8.30 service is so much better than the 11 o'clock service or the 1.30 service. That the 11 o'clock service is so much better than the 8.30 or the 1.30. Or the 1.30 service is the best of the best. Or, or for you to say, I follow Derek because he's the leader of the 8.30 service. Or I follow Omar because he's awesome in the 11 o'clock service. That you would pick your personality and you would rally all of your faith around that personality to say, I'm going to follow whatever they say and I'm going to ignore the rest and platform that one above all the others. And Paul wants to get after this. We may not say it, but maybe in our hearts, we do have a favorite and we say, well, they're the best. And what Paul says, it's not about who's the best, it's about unity and it's about walking together. And so he's going to use three different images. He's going to use three different word pictures to really get at the heart of this, to be able to see how Jesus is working in us to make a kingdom impact. So if you're new to Gloria Day, this is very important to keep in mind because I find that when someone is new to Gloria Day, you sometimes latch around a personality and say, I'm here at Gloria Day because of that church leader. And here, it's not about a church leader, it's about what God is doing in a church that gets you connected to him. Or if you've been here 20 years or 30 years, this is a great reminder that we don't live our faith around one person here at Gloria Day, that it's all wrapped around Jesus and the impact that he's making, and especially the impact he's allowed at Gloria Day for so many years so that we could be at this place and at this time. So look with me in these three images. If we fast forward to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, this is where he double clicks on what he said in chapter 1 and says, I'm really going to get at the heart of these divisions and people picking sides. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 4, he says this, For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? So he's calling this out. You're not having the things of spirit on your mind. You're not having the things of God on your mind. You're just being a human. He goes on in verse 5, What then is Apollos? What is Paul? And he answers his own question. He says, We are servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants or he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. So Paul is saying that when you look at these people, who are they? And he says, they're, they're nobodies. They don't, they don't mean anything. We are servants, Paul is saying, He's saying, Paul, Apollos, pick anyone in the church. We are servants, not celebrities. We are servants serving God and doing his chores in the church. And he's saying this image of how God and what he's doing, it, it's God's field. God's field. And then that we're just farmers. And that image doesn't really connect with us because we don't have very many farmers in our day and age. But it would be like taking care of the lawn or taking care of plants. What control do you have over the growth of your lawn or growth of the plants? You can plant seed, you can fertilize it, you can water it, but you can't control the sun. You can't control when it's cloudy. God allows the growth, and he's making that connection to the church. None of us can do anything or control anything in God's church. It's God who provides the growth in our lives. And Paul is saying that Apollos and Cephas, they're co-workers, they're part of the team, and he says, and we are nothing in verse 7, but only God provides the growth. And, and that there is a place that God provides that growth in his local church. And so what if we all had that perspective that this is God's field? 
that God is providing the growth? What if you as a greeter, as you greet people, that you had this perspective of, wow, this is God's field. What is he doing through my influence to make an impact so that I can greet someone, provide them joy and grace on this Sunday morning? For those of you who volunteer in a children's environment, what if you had this perspective of all these little kids, this is God's field, God is tending to this, and, and how is he growing the lives of faith in these little ones? Or middle school and high school, those of you who are small group leaders, what if you had this perspective of, man, this is God's field and, and he's giving me this privilege to pour into these middle school students and high school students? And what kind of impact are they going to make in college and when they become adults because of my influence and impact? Not just because I'm a superstar or I'm a celebrity, but just because I'm a servant following God's call, pouring into these middle schoolers and high schoolers. What if all of us, no matter what role we have at Gloria Day, what if we viewed it as God's field, that it's not ours, it doesn't belong to us, but that we are servants serving God and saying, man, this is God's field, he's cultivating growth, he's growing faith, and he's using you and using me to make an impact in other people's lives. And then Paul goes on and gives us a second image. Not only is this God's field, but Paul says this is God's building. He, he says in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he shifts gears. He shifts from us being a farmer and a servant to us being a subcontractor in God's building. He says, for we're God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. So let each one take care how he builds on it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So he says, we are subcontractors in God's building. And you may ask, well, there's already a building, there's already a foundation physically here at Gloria Day, but Paul's talking about our spiritual lives, that there's already a foundation that was laid. See, in Corinth, Paul laid the foundation. He spent a year and a half there laying the foundation, and then he allowed other people to build on that foundation so that that church can make an impact. Someone else is building. Our job is to get the foundation going. And so Paul is saying, be careful how you build. Be careful about your attitudes and your actions as you're building the lives of faith in other people. And he said in verse 11, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And he's saying this is Jesus not as a theory, not Jesus as a great idea, or Jesus as a piece of jewelry or a logo that we wear. He's talking about the real physical Jesus who came to this earth and suffered and died a death that we deserved and rose again three days later. And that that power of the resurrection and the faith that he gives us and the forgiveness that's there, that that's the foundation upon everything that we do in a congregation, everything we do at Gloria Day, that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he provides grace and strength. And he goes on and says, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will be manifest. So he gives us even more images. He says, if you, as, as you're building, if you build with wood, hay, or straw, all that's going to crumble. All that's going to be self-evident. If you pick people and celebrities and personalities, it's all the wrong foundation. But if we build on gold and straw and precious stone and silver, he says that's going to last. And he's making this connection to Jesus Christ, that he is our cornerstone that he is what we do everything to glorify him. So the third image that he gives us, because he really wants to get at divisions, he really wants to get at picking personalities. So if that wasn't enough to say, hey, we're just in God's field, serving and cultivating, if it wasn't enough to say, hey, we're, we're subcontractors in God's building, he gives us the third image which says we are God's temple. In 1 Corinthians 3.16 he says, do you not know that you were God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells within you. That, that we are God's temple, that the church isn't the building, the church is the people gathered here worshiping him and then being sent out in our communities to make an impact beyond anything we could ever imagine. Jesus said this in his ministry in Matthew 18 verse 20 where he made us this promise. He said, where two or three are gathered, what? He, he is with us. 
So it doesn't matter if we gather on a Sunday or we gather in a small group or we gather in a neighborhood. Jesus promises to be with us that we are his temple, that we are his sacred space, that we get to make a profound impact on other people's lives. And it raises our vision. It raises our vision beyond paying the bills or checking the box that we went to church on Sunday. It's about what God is doing in and through us to make an impact. It's the old parable, it's the old story of an architect who was visiting a project site. And he was interacting with the bricklayers that were building this building. And he asked them individually, what are you doing as you lay these bricks? And the first bricklayer said, well, I'm a bricklayer, and I'm working hard to lay the bricks so I can earn money to feed my family. And the man seemed tired, and he wasn't far along in his work as all the others were. The second bricklayer answered, well, I'm a builder, and I'm building the strongest wall possible, and this wall will be a foundation for the building and will protect everyone inside. The third one answered in this way. He had an energy and excitement in his eye. He says, I'm building a cathedral, and I'm building a great place of worship where people can gather and pray and worship God. Now, each of them were doing a work, but the attitude and the perspective they had in each of their work were completely different. It was the third one who had a big vision for a big impact in the daily work that he was doing. And it's that same vision that Paul has in 1 Corinthians for you and for me, that as we seek to make a kingdom impact, that we're not just checking the box and stepping through whatever we volunteered and said we would do. It's about seeing what God is doing and the honor and the privilege we get to partner with God as he grows people in our lives of faith. So ask yourself, who depends on you? Who are you leading? Because all of you are influencers. All of you are leaders at Gloria Day. And one question to find that out is to say, who depends on me? If you're a parent, your child depends on you. You're leading them in the life of faith. If you're a small group leader or here at Gloria Day in any role, in any capacity, who depends on you? And if you didn't show up, who would miss you? You would be amazed at the impact that you have. And it's our Lord who is raising our vision to say, where can we serve? How can we help? What can we use our gifts and our talents and our abilities to make a kingdom impact and expand the impact that Glory Day has and the work that God is doing in and among us? It's very exciting, Glory Day, to see the work that he's already done, to be able to celebrate that work, to be where we're at today at Glory Day. And it's even more exciting to see in the future what God is doing to be able to see our lives of faith and the impact that God is using in and through us because you make an impact. You may not realize it, but in the small everyday things in life, you are making an impact on so many other people. So don't ignore that. Don't take that for granted. Remind yourselves that your faith is firmly in Jesus Christ, not in a personality, not in a person, but only in Jesus Christ. And as you continue to be faithful to his calling, as you are courageous and take those steps of faith in a bold, bold faith in a way that is going beyond your strength and your wisdom, you will see how Jesus is working in and through you to not only impact your life and your life of faith, but also how you're providing Jesus grace and strength and mercy and the truth of his resurrection that he is the savior of the world to others. It's my prayer for this and glory to as we continue to move forward, unified, continuing to move forward, watching God and what he's doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come before you today and we thank you that you give us a courageous faith. You give us a faith that rests solely in Jesus and the work that he's done for us on the cross and in the empty tomb. Lord, we pray that you would give us that courage to live out that life of faith, to present that truth that Jesus is our hope and that he is our joy to others. Lord, we lift up those who are sick and ill, facing procedures or surgeries this week. Lord, you are also the master healer, and we pray that you would restore people to full health and that you would use the doctors and nurses as instruments of your miraculous healing. Lord, be with their family members as they care for their loved ones. Lord, we also lift up all their prayers before you this week. We thank you for the impact that you're making in the life of our church. We lift up Impact Week this week that all those who volunteer to serve, all those who are transporting volunteers to and from the work sites, Lord, that this week would be a celebration of what you're doing in our local community. 
We also lift up the team in Honduras, and we pray that as they make an impact and help us make an impact across the world, that any sort of the, the medical services that they provide, Lord, that you would continue to work in and through them to see how we are impacting the lives of those in Honduras. Lord, we also lift up a prayer for all of our Concordias as a part of our Synod, a part of our Lutheran Church across the nation. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of our Concordias, that they would lead wisely, and that, Lord, your mission of reaching others who are far from you would be the central focus, that Christ may be first in everything, in every decision. Lord, we lift up all of these prayers to you, and we pray that you would give us your Holy Spirit more and more every day, that we would live a life of impact for you and to glorify you. Lord, we thank you, and we pray all these prayers using the prayer that your Son taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Y'all can sing. I love that. Hey, a couple of things I want to share with you this morning before we've been going through the analysis. I really want to uh, reaffirm what, what Pastor Randy uh, was sharing this morning. Um, what I heard him do this morning was turn ministry or turn volunteer jobs into ministry jobs. I don't think y'all realize the amazing amount of influence and impact that you have serving in front and behind the scenes. You know, my prayer is every Sunday that not a person would leave this place without experiencing God's grace in some way, shape, or form. And what does that mean? It could be through a handshake. It could be through a greeting. It could be through good morning. It could be through a, 
a hymn. It could be through a message. It could be someone who's sitting in the pew next to you reaches over and says, how are you doing? Let it be said, guys, that we never leave this place and there is not a person who is not welcomed in the name of Jesus. And so if you're a first-time guest here this morning and no one said hi to you, I want you to tattletale to me. <laughs> I want you to come to me and tell me this morning that someone didn't say hello to you and you didn't feel welcomed. And no, I'm just kidding. I love you guys, but don't let it happen. There are people here for a reason, and maybe this morning is a divine appointment that they need to understand that Jesus loves them. That God has forgiven them in Christ, and you may be the very person who shares that message far better than Pastor Randy or myself ever could. So this isn't about Paul, Apollos, Cephas. This is about God's people in God's house, doing God's ministry and mission, influencing the impact in our world. I want you to think about something. Somebody yesterday received a new pair of glasses because of your influence to send our mission team to Honduras yesterday. You will never know that person. You will never meet that person. Your impact has completely changed that individual's life because of your financial generosity and your influence in the ministry here to allow us to send teams to Honduras. Our high school kids just returned back from a mission trip. I saw something noticeably different in those kids before they left and after they returned in terms of deepening relationships among each other. I talked to Audrey about it. She was very intentional in making that happen. That stuff just doesn't happen by accident, y'all. And because of your influence, there is major impact happening in those kids' lives that we'll never know how far that reaches into our community, into high school, into college. Glory Day, y'all are amazing. And I give thanks to God that I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here, one of the servants, one of the ministers of the gospel alongside each and every one of you. Please don't ever discount the work that God is doing in and through you. I'm just a, no, mm -mm, don't, don't let me hear you say that. I'm just a greeter. I'm just an usher. I'm just a communion assistant. No. You're a minister of the gospel. And you're making an influence and impact in ways that you will never realize. So I say thank you. A couple announcements we'll share with you. Tomorrow, impact week. There's going to be some impact happening in this community. Um, there's a free car wash. They're really trying to, really trying to push this hard, y'all. On Thursday, uh, June 27th from 10 to 12. Uh, a great opportunity uh, to also impact our community. I, I know they wash the police cars and they work with the city hall officials and everything else, but what a great way to also play a, a wonderful way in our community. And they're working with Lighthouse uh, in Baycliff. They're working with um, different organizations and ministries that we serve and partner with at Gloria Day. That QR code has all the information. Today's the last site day to sign up to volunteer. Guys, here's a way to make an influence and impact. I'm telling you, driving those kids around, you get to hear their conversations. And you're like, wow, okay. I need to either reframe that or I'm really impressed. <laughs> Second announcement. Um, we partner with um, Nassau Bay. And um, one of the things that we do is they share our announcements. We want to share it. Nassau Bay is having a hurricane and flood preparedness meeting on June 27th. Um, it is at 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Nassau Bay Fire Department. It's a Nassau Bay event. Uh, love to have you there for that. It's a hurricane and flood preparedness meeting June 27th, next Sunday, Freedom Sunday. You do not want to miss this. Freedom Sunday, June 30th. Uh, we're also, it's an opportunity to celebrate our nation's freedom, but also to honor our military men and women, active and retired. If your uniform still fits, wear it. Uh, we love having a, a salute to the armed forces. We actually have uh, guest speaker, Chaplain David Molesby, who's uh, 
um, works with the PTSD Association of America, or Foundation of America, and is uh, with uh, Camp Hope. And uh, love having Camp Hope here next Sunday as well. Fifth Sunday food drive, same Sunday, June 30th. Uh, there's a list of items that you can uh, bring. And drop them off of the trailer by the Life Center. Love to have you do that. Again, more influence, more impact uh, in the summer months when kids are also not getting the free and reduced lunches during school time that we also have that opportunity to serve. With that, I invite the congregation to please stand. Having heard the word of God, it's time for us to know, go out and be church. To be the hands and feet of Jesus. It may be in your homes. It could be in the spaces where you live, where you work, where you gather, where you play. To make influence and impact for God's kingdom. But maybe it could be as simple as saying good morning, hello, letting somebody in on 45. Just saying. Go with the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon his favor, grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn.